A 76-year-old man in Seattle has just vandalized an Asian American museum based on the fact that Chinese have tortured me for 14 years. That was his reasoning. But David, what does that even mean? What, oh, what's going on? Craig, well, we have been neighbors for 14 years. I thought we had a great relationship. You like my pot stickers. Um, Andrew, on Thursday, Craig Milne, 76 years old, allegedly yelled racist statements and smashed nine windows of the historic museum using a sledgehammer. Andrew, he has been arrested and charged with a hate crime and put on $30,000 bail. Wow. All right, everybody, we're going to talk about what does that mean? What are some theories? What are some speculations about this guy? Why did he do it? Please hit that like button and check out other episodes of the Hop Hop Boys. David, this one hits particularly close to home because this happened in Seattle at the Wing Luke Museum, which is a famous Asian American museum, which we went to growing up to the old location. And then when they remodeled, we went to that one too. Yeah, we got to also talk about why this news is going so viral right now. But real quick, Andrew, we have a word from our sponsor, Smala. Get it at smalasauce.com from Sichuan to Sicily. This is unlike any other finishing oil that you can find on the market right now. Made with real truffle and made in America. Andrew, what did we do to him? For 14 years. I mean, he's so specific about the exact era that he was tormented and tortured. Well, you know, I have to think. You know, I work with Craig for some time. And back in maybe 2009, 14 years ago, I remember something happening. I brought a lunch to work and I warmed it up in the microwave. But it was kind of smelly, you know, unfortunately. Oh, you brought the fish. And, and Craig, I guess Craig complained about it. So maybe... That's the reason. No, I'm just kidding, guys. Honestly, uh, first of all, I, I, in a way, feel bad for the guy, but I'm glad he's in jail because he's clearly tormented in his mind and he's clearly mentally ill, which that is happening a lot. And anytime you add mentally ill people consuming the media, they're going to have all these feelings. Maybe there was a Chinese person in his life that represented something bad. I don't know. Obviously, there's I, I, I a lot actually of think it's much, much more likely it is macroeconomic, like okay. industry-driven factors, possibly due to globalization and outsourcing. Um, Andrew, let's be honest here. He looks like Donald Trump. He's wearing a golf polo that's relatively clean and a golf Nike hat. This is not like a fiend on the street addicted to substances. Yeah. I'm not saying he doesn't put, got some mental issues or some sort of old person muscle atrophy in his brain, but I think that that's why partially this is going so viral, right? Look Honestly, at it optically, right? Dude, he is dressed like a typical Northwest engineer dad. Like he almost worked at Boeing for some time right. with kind of the oversized it, jeans. Does he look like he watches Fox News? Be honest. Though. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I think he has like Air Monarchs on and like stuff. <laughs> like he looks like a total dad. So not a street uh, walker or whatever, you know, like not a homeless guy off the street in Pioneer Square or something like that. But, you know, so I think it's sad to see even guys that look normal and had jobs and had lives kind of go off the rails like this, you know, um, because it's really unexpected. But I guess, David, what are some speculations? Well, a lot of people were speculating, did he have a Chinese ex-wife? However, people did the research on Craig Milne and he had a white ex-wife that divorced him. Now, this is just speculation. Maybe his ex-wife left him for a Chinese guy. I mean, yeah, I don't, I'm that, just kidding. That's probably not the reason. It's honestly, probably well, not. Why, why, why couldn't it be the reason? It, that happens nah, all I the mean, time. No, nah, yeah. it, it could happen. I'm just saying. Um, he could have had Chinese neighbors, right? Possibly. For, they, for 14 years, for 14. But the dog. The, since 2009, they let their little shih tzu take a poo all over my lawn, and it tormented me. Yeah, I mean, honestly, there was a bunch of funny theories, and there, you know, there was a bunch of jokes, of course, as there is always is in 2023 on the internet. I think a lot of it probably is more industry specific. I'm gonna go ahead and just guess he was part of like expediting or shipping, or maybe maybe he was in toy manufacturing. Uh, Who knows? But that that actually died in America way more than 14 years ago. Anyway, guys, let's get into the comment section. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Somebody said, some people are just so sad and miserable. They need to put that energy somewhere else that will actually help make the world a better place. Mm. Um, why do you think it seems like in 2023, Andrew, is it just online news? It seems like people are channeling their frustration not in a constructive way. Yeah, no, no. I think there's a lot of 
older generation, particularly white people, but not all white people, obviously, but just there's an older generation who's very frustrated, who, the you know, the world changed very fast on them. There's a lot of media. You can easily stay on Facebook and all these little, like, in your little circle and get, like, the same negative news. And it's not necessarily... Especially Facebook. And, and it's not necessarily, like, uh, real news either. It could be misinformation, too. And that can just kind of get to you. And, you know, if you're a little mentally ill, depressed, and got a little anger. Well, he clearly he was divorced. Listen, I'm glad. Record. I mean, in a way, like I'm glad he didn't hurt a person because that taking a sledgehammer to a person would have killed somebody. I guess he he wanted to knock down what he saw as a image or a statue representing Asians or Chinese people. Right, right, right. Somebody said he probably looks like a lot of MAGA commenters on Yahoo News. Oh, yeah, that's an interesting comment. That's actually really funny. That's actually why I like reading Yahoo News comments, to be honest, because it offers a different perspective that's very unmillennial, very un-internet generation. Somebody said liberals would call this white-on-white -white crime, and there was a lot of basically talk from people who are either middle right or on the right politically and are saying that how come only white people get charged with hate crimes? Um, like in the sense of like, it seems like that the public opinion is easier to, that it's just like an easier play. I mean, technically you have to, to charge somebody with a hate crime, they have to be yelling out hateful words towards a group while they're in the act. Right. You know, Literally, you have to be saying verbally. hateful racial things See, while you are doing I the hate violent. The act, Chinese, right? and that was caught on camera, so they know. Andy also admitted it to admitted to it. So now they, they it's that that's why being a hate crime, dude. Whether or not it's deemed as a hate crime, it's out of hate. You right. know what I mean? Actually, his exact words were: "The Chinese have been tormenting me and torturing me for fourteen years. I regret nothing that I did today." Yeah, so I'm glad he's in jail. Yeah, somebody said it was about jobs. They took our jobs. Interestingly enough, Andrew, that was actually the same case with uh, Vincent Chin. In the 90s, a lot of people were saying that the Japanese economy was supercharged and taking uh, a lot of commerce away from America yeah, in a yeah. macroeconomic sense, right? Yeah. Um, somebody said, well, a lot of uh, dumb old white men like Trump and Biden are ruining most of our lives, but that doesn't justify breaking in the windows of a Sizzler's or a Morton Steakhouse to uh, damage rich old white guys. Yeah. 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 yeah characterizing mean, Sizzler's with old white guys. I mean, I also think it's really part funny. of it. He felt comfortable doing it in Chinatown because he thought, you know, Chinatown's not known for you know, uh, repercussions and like, you know, there's not like a Chinese gangster that's going to pop out of the side and check him for it. So he, he just figured he was just, yeah, he was free to do it. I mean, to be fair, whether, I mean, is, yeah, it, people feel like they can be extra comfortable and extra violent in Asian spaces because there is no immediate threat of repercussion. Yeah, like people said. feel like they can push the buttons of Asians and pick on Asians extra for sure. For sure, 100%. That is 10,000% true, honestly. Um, somebody said, so the city will go after this, which I agree with is a no-brainer, but not other crimes that happen on a daily basis, such as brazen auto theft, assault, drug use, drug dealing, et cetera, et cetera. And this kind of got into like a, okay, People are, they're, they're just going to prosecute this guy because it's easy to practice, prosecute this guy, but they're going to let like a bunch of other stuff go. Right, right. I don't yeah, know. to be honest, I mean, it goes to political optics and stuff like that. For sure, it, it plays a part in it, guys. You'd have to say everything is in 2023 is like this. Somebody, and this white guy said, before condemning this guy, understand that he probably lived in a time where the Chinese government was more harsher than it is now. The greed of the U.S. companies moving over to the cheap labor and the quality eliminated many jobs here and probably caused a lot of loss of his income. Sometimes it's just a matter of his perspective. I'm not saying he was right, but I kind of understand. Dang, yeah. No, I mean, even the fact that someone comments and is like, yo, I can empathize. I mean, there's also... A lot of people can empathize with a lot of criminals, like, depending on what their motive is. Like, right, you because a get, lot... You get it because you're like, all right, I can see with human nature being a man, I can see why he's frustrated. Obviously, I don't agree with what he did, but yes, I can... I, like, a lot of people would say that, you know? Right, right, right. I, I mean... The point, the truth is, man, I, I think a lot of people can understand that a lot of people had bad lives and they got put in bad situations, which lead them to make a, into like a, a spiral of bad yeah. choices. But at, at the same time, I'm like, so what? Just because we can kind of understand the motivations behind something, we have to excuse it. That right. doesn't even make any sense because then every criminal globally could say that I had a bad life. I got dealt bad cards. Um, Andrew, let's just get into our takeaways. Um, 
I think that this story went so viral because it is a guy who just doesn't even look like he would do this, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not like a... He doesn't seem like a homeless crackhead. Right, this is just not a fiend on the street just, like, throwing a rock in a window, right? This yeah. is like an old guy wearing golf clothing. Yeah, yeah. It kinda, he kind of represents a lot of America, to be honest. And I think that's why a lot of people are looking at it like, whoa, uh, is this going to happen more with, like, 67-year-old white guys? Because there's a lot of them in this country. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, I think it's almost like people are uh, having extrapolating a lot more like macro takeaways. Yeah. Like people are like representing archetypes rather than yeah. just like, was it really that bad as it was? Yeah, you know? over, overall, man, I just wish that people would jump out of their news loops and their negativity loops that they're in that you can get sucked into on like, especially on social media. Obviously, there is real stuff going on in this world. Uh, America versus China and a rivalry of economics and uh, intellectual property and spying and all this stuff. And uh, so I guess there's that real stuff. But then, uh, man, I don't know. If people are mentally ill, you can't really stop them from consuming media. So I think that's the issue. Yeah. I mean, as far as Seattle goes, you know, apparently the police took 50 minutes to come after they were called to come arrest Craig Milne. But the thing is, he was crazy enough and angry enough. He just stayed and waited for 50 minutes. So he totally could have got away. And then a lot of people were saying, man, this is just a commentary on how understaffed and underserved uh, the police are doing their job in Seattle. Interesting. Yeah, but then obviously, do you put the blame on people defunding the police or do you put the blame on the police department still being inept or just, you know, is it about the distribution of resources? There's a lot of discussions to be had. I just think this, uh, everybody needs to get on the right page, I guess, to address like any sort of like mental health issues, you know? And it goes to show you, Andrew, the mental health issues are not just limited to like people who are really poor. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it could be older people who had... Uh, you know, a long, lengthy yeah. industry-based career. Who even had a pension? Maybe he lost his pension, you know, to whatever. I don't know if China took his pension. I don't see how that could have happened. But yeah, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. I mean, I guess you guys let us know in the comments down below. Um, you know, thankfully, he didn't hurt a human. But, you know, there's damage done to the museum. It's up to $100,000 in damages. And uh, who would... I mean, he could hurt a... He could, he could hurt a human next. You know what I mean? So, I guess... What does this all mean? I want to end on this, though, Andrew. The director of the Wing Luke Museum, I, I, I got to provide his perspective. He said, I don't want the news only showing the bad things that are happening to us overshadow that we got a lot of positive programs in the community to help, you know, disenfranchise people and other things like that. So, like we said, sometimes the news cycle is more going to emphasize negative news because it gets more click-through rate. Yeah. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section below of this whole incident of Craig Milne, you know, attacking the Wing Luke Museum in Seattle. Keep it civil. Until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.